right, let's talk about Yemma. I stumbled upon this brand as I started my deep dive into the world of affordable quartz chronographs a while back. It was the Panda Rally Graph that initially caught my eye, but after digging deeper into the brand's lineup, I found this. The Yemma Superman Bronze Korea Special Edition. I was fascinated by this watch and its design because it closely resembles lots of furniture I had around my house growing up, which was Yemma's intention on capturing the essence of this. Last November, Yemma ran a Black Friday sale and listed this watch for 30% off retail. I paid $690 before tax. It honestly wasn't a no-brainer. I was torn because the only connection I had with Yemma up until this point was their tie-in with something that hit close to home and my culture. It was TGV's review of a Superman that ultimately solidified my purchase decision, and I wanted something in bronze. Bronze is a material that evolves in its look and condition over time. The way bronze patinas on a watch is unique to every watch, depending on use and environment. Some people don't like the idea of it, but I'm good with it. Founded in 1948 by French watchmaker Henri Louis Belmont, Yemma made some strides with the release of their Superman Diver in 1963. The Superman Diver was, and still is to this day, a unique diving watch because it boasts 300 meters of water resistance and features a unique bezel locking mechanism. At one point, Formula One champion Mario Andretti sported the Yemma Rally Graph, which I'm sure bolstered its popularity and clout. Yemma was acquired by Seiko in 1988, eventually making its way back onto French soil by 2004. From my perspective, Yemma is a heritage-rich watch brand that operates like a microbrand, if that makes sense. At the time of this recording, Yemma has updated their Superman lineup with newer features, case finishing, bracelets, and colorways. The Superman I'm talking about today is from the previous lineup, which can still be found on secondhand markets online if you're looking to find a deal. The case dimensions is 39 millimeters in diameter, lug to lug is 48.1, but when on the bracelet, it's 53.7. This is because the bracelet's male end links. Thickness is 13.1 with the crystal, but feels like a 10 millimeter watch. This watch wears slimmer than it actually is because of how domed the crystal is. And the lug width is 19 millimeters. The case is a brushed 316L stainless steel construction with a bronze bezel and signed screw down bronze crown. As mentioned before, the Superman Diver features a bezel lock system, which is activated when the crown is screwed all the way down into the case. I like this feature. I think it's a clever design, but I don't really miss it on any of my other divers. The lugs are drilled for easy strap swaps and the crown guards flow nicely from each lug tapering down as it gets closer to the crown. Despite the very pronounced crown guard design choice, I never have any issues accessing the crown to adjust the time. The screw down case back features Yemma's logo front and center and is nicely embossed. Standard text surrounds the outer edges of the case back in a basic sans serif font, but one very special text feature is the use of Hangul or Korean text, which says Tehan Minguk, which translates to Republic of Korea. The dial color is a deep mahogany inspired by the wood stain used in Korean Tanchong architecture. The Yema logo and text are painted in gold to match the bronze bezel and handset, along with a gold painted minute track along the outside edge. The indices are symmetrical and borderless. Each is loomed with the color green and contrasts nicely with the deep burgundy dial. The handset is this watch's best feature in my opinion. All the hands are made from a polished brass material. The minute hand is an arrow shape, the hour hand is a sword shape, and the second hand is a shovel shape. Shovel shape, that's a tongue twister. All the hands are loomed for easy legibility and mixed lighting conditions, but I will say the loom doesn't last that long. The coin edge bezel is made from bronze with embossed indices and Arabic switching every five minutes. There is a loom pip at the 12 o'clock. The bronze is a nod to Korean bronze craftsmanship or pangja. The way it ties in with the dial really gives this piece a look that reminds me of old Korean furniture at my mom's house. I think it's beautiful and I'm happy that I can own a watch that reminds me of home when I look at it. The crystal is a very thick domed sapphire that honestly has a lot of glare when I look at it. I'm not sure if it's the darker dial color or the lack of anti-reflective coating. I will admit it's hard to read sometimes, but 
really does a great job at evoking that vintage inspired look if you're into that. The movement is Yema's in-house movement, the Yema 2000. It beats at four hertz and has a 42 hour power reserve. This watch does not have any certifications, but ran at a pretty run of the mill accuracy at around minus 10 seconds from perfect time after 24 hours of wear. There is no date on this watch. 300 meters of water resistance is overkill for any everyday application, and I have no intentions on or do I even have the capability to test this for myself. This watch is not ISO certified, and I'm not sure how they got the 300 meter rating, but I'm glad it's there. The bracelet is nice. It tapers down to 16 millimeters and features solid end links and a milled clasp. The clasp itself feels tight and clicks in with confidence. The H-Link bracelet is brushed and finished immaculately. I was surprised when I pulled this out of the box at how smooth the bracelet felt and still feels to this day. The bracelet features a pin system and sizing was very easy. The bracelet does have male end links, but I don't have any issues with that. It wears comfortable on my six and a half inch wrist. Overall finishing of this watch is great. I must mention, however, that while out of town for a job, the screw down crown stripped out and I needed to send it back to Yema for a service. The whole process was easy peasy and they got my watch back to me in like three weeks. Other than that, I have not had any issues with this watch. Out of all the watches in my collection, I must say, I do get the most compliments or mentions while wearing this one. This watch was released in 2022, but honestly looks and feels like a vintage piece. I utilize this piece as an everyday and sometimes as a dress diver for certain occasions. Okay, so who is this watch for? Say you're just getting into watches and you come across Tudor's Black Bay 58 and fall in love, like most of us did. Looking at the sticker price of the Tudor Black Bay 58 could be jarring especially if you've never even thought of spending that much money on a watch before. For my one watch collection peeps, I would say, keep saving your money and buy that banger that you can wear every day for every occasion. But if you're someone like me and like some variety, I would honestly give Yema a shot, especially if you're into that classic looking vintage inspired dive watch. This is a great conversation piece and it'll help you save some money to add other watches to your collection. I appreciate all the support. If you like this video, do all the things. Please like and subscribe, bell icons, whatever it is. And I'll see you on the next one.